So today we're going to look at the addition of vectors for our course MS-171 in math and we're also going to be using the right triangle trig methodology and this is going to be very important for your mechanics courses. We're going to look at a system of four vectors, one, two, three, and four as shown, and we're going to use right triangle trig to add each of the vectors together. So equation-wise, we're going force 1 plus force 2 plus force 3 plus force 4 is equal to our resultant vector r. It's going to be important that we have our vectors written in polar form with standard position angles. Before we do that, though, let's take a look at a graphical way of seeing what exactly is happening when we add each of our vectors. The method we're going to look at first is the graphical tip-to-tail method and this means that we're actually going to redraw each of the vectors and as we draw them we'll draw the first one starting at the origin so there's our force one going over to the blank xy plane we're then going to take our next force vector number two and when we bring that one over we're going to draw it so that the beginning of force vector two is actually drawn at the end of our first vector so there it goes. We'll repeat this process for force number three. So again the beginning of force three is drawn at the end of force two. And then finally repeat the process for force number four where the beginning of force four is at the end of force three. Our resultant vector will then start at the origin and finish where the end point of our force number four was. So when we draw it we can see it going up there and dark blue, there's our resultant vector, and it's currently in quadrant 2. Let's repeat this graphical representation, but using the parallelogram method. This time round, we're going to break down each of our vectors into its x and y components. So you'll see in blue, and light blue is the force 1 x component, and dark blue the force 1 y component. Again, we bring them over to our blank xy plane to make things easier to see and this time we line them up with the x and the y axes respectively. There's force number two, it's only in the y direction, and when we bring it over, again we put its start point at the end point of the y component for force one. Repeating the process for force number three, there's the x component for force three, and the y component for force three. Bringing each of them over, Again, the x component overlaps with the x component of force 1, and the y component of force 3 now begins at the end point of the y component for force 2. We'll finally end with the same process for force number 4. It is only in the x direction, so we bring it over and line up with the x axis. The resultant in the y direction is shown by your red line. The resultant in the x direction is shown by the orange line and then our parallelogram comes from making a box or a parallelogram using these two vectors and our resultant vector is drawn again from the origin to the vertex at the other side of the parallelogram so again we're in the second quadrant for our course and for mechanics we are going to need a numerical technique though so it's easiest to do that in a table where we'll list all our vectors with their standard position angles and then we'll calculate and manipulate both the x and the y components. So our first step is to list each of the forces with their magnitude and their standard position angle direction. So for the four vectors we had before, here are each of them with their magnitudes and their standard position angles. And when we had to do a calculation for them, we found it. We then need to least list each of the x components for the vectors using the formula magnitude times cosine of the standard position angle, and there they are. Repeat the process for the y components using the magnitude of the vector times the sine of the standard position angle, and there's each of the y components. Our next step will be then to actually add up the x components. So we'll take each of the four numbers, we'll add them together, and get the resultant in the x direction. We'll repeat this same process for the y components. Take a look at the four numbers, add them up, and there's our resultant in the y direction.
We then need the actual magnitude of the resultant vector. And to get that, we're going to have to use our Pythagorean theorem. So you can see the calculation on the overhead, and our result winds up being the magnitude of the resultant vector is 326.12 newtons. We don't just need the magnitude, though. We also need the direction of the resultant vector. And in order to do that, we're going to use right trig again. And our right trig is going to be using the tangent function. And when we plug that information in, we undo the tangent function for the ratio of the y component over the x. And our calculator gives us a negative 59.01 degrees. Now we need to interpret this number. And we have to remember, let's look at our x and our y components. What quadrant were we in when we looked at it graphically? We were in quadrant 2. And this is shown by that the x component is negative and the y is positive. Since we are in quadrant 2, we should remember that our relationship between standard position and reference is standard position is 180 minus reference. So we get our standard position angle of 120.99 degrees. Our very last step for this whole exercise will be to verify all our numbers using our calculator in its complex mode because that makes calculations very easy with vectors. When we do do that, we're in complex mode, we enter each of our vectors in polar form, magnitude and standard position angle direction, add them all up, and we can see how we do verify a solution is 326.12 newtons, 120.99 degrees. Just remember, you won't always get the standard position angle. Make sure you know what you're doing.